Hi, welcome back. This video is on vector components. Let's get started. Okay, first off, the uh, x component of the vector is the, the mathematical name for it is the projection of the vector on the x-axis. I like to think of it as the shadow of the vector on the x-axis. If you think, uh, if you can visualize this, a really large flashlight hanging way above the vector, pointing down towards the x-axis, the shadow that the vector would cast on the x-axis is the component. Another way uh, that we think about it, in fact, this is how we come up with the mathematical uh, relationship. Uh, the uh, vector is the hypotenuse of a right triangle. The x component is the side of the triangle that is along the x-axis. And we can use our trig identities. In this case, we have the adjacent and the hypotenuse. And the adjacent and the hypotenuse go along with our friend Mr. Cosine. So the cosine of the angle between the vector and the x component is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And we're going to stop calling these things adjacent and hypotenuse. Uh, we're going to call them the x component and the magnitude of the vector. The hypotenuse is the magnitude of the vector. And the that means that our x component, a sub x, means the x component of vector a, is equal to the magnitude of vector a times the cosine of the angle theta. That's not too tough, is it? So the y component, just like the x component, is the shadow that it casts on the y-axis. Or in math speak, it's the projection of the vector on the y-axis. Again, we're going to use the right triangle idea. And the blue dotted line is the component. It lies along the y-axis. But I'm going to use the triangle and have my y component uh, be the opposite of the angle theta. And opposite and hypotenuse goes along with sine. So Mr. Sine says that the sine of the angle is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And again, we're going to drop this opposite and hypotenuse stuff right here. And we will say that the sine of the angle, theta, is equal to the y component of vector a divided by the magnitude of vector a. Rearranging so that we can solve for the y component of vector a gives us a sine theta. a again is the magnitude of vector a. Now the angle. So we want to find the angle. We know our components. We don't know the length of our vector in this case. We know our components. We know the y component and we know our x component. And the y component is opposite of the angle. See right here, it's opposite from the angle. And the x component is adjacent to the angle. And our friend Mr. Tangent, the tangent of the angle is the y component divided by the x component. Now to find the actual angle, we need to do the inverse function, the inverse of tangent, the inverse tangent of the y component divided by the x component gives us our angle. And again, we have to be careful because of the quadrant. If we are in the first quadrant, whatever our calculator says, whatever our calculator says, is the angle that we use. Now, it gets a little bit more challenging when we're over here in the second, third, and fourth quadrants. If we're in the second quadrant, our x component is negative, and our y component is positive. And then when we take our inverse tangent, we would be doing the inverse tangent of a positive number over a negative number. We would have a negative fraction 
and that's going to give us a negative angle out of the calculator. Well, if we look at this closely, I'm going to erase a little bit here. If we look at this closely, if we're in the second quadrant, our vector is here, our y component is this, we'll say that's a y, and our x component is a x. Okay, our x component is pointing in the negative direction. That's why our component's negative. Our y component's pointing in the positive direction. The angle of that we have that we're going to get from our calculator or that we're yes the angle that we're going to get out of our calculator is this angle we don't want that angle we want the polar angle the one that comes from the x-axis the positive x-axis counterclockwise from the positive x-axis so when we take our inverse tangent of y component over x component, the calculator will tell us this angle between the negative x-axis and the vector. Well, this direction, the direction of the negative x-axis is 180. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the angle that our calculator gives us to 180 degrees, and that will give us the polar angle, the angle that we're looking for. So, second quadrant, add 180 degrees to whatever comes out of your calculator. Third quadrant, same idea. We're going to get a positive angle. In this case, we're going to add it to 180 degrees. It will put our vector properly in the third quadrant. If we're in the fourth quadrant, in this case, we're going to add the angle the 360 degrees where our calculator is going to give us some angle negative angle between 0 and negative 90 we would add it to 360 and that will give us the proper polar angle if we add it to 360 I know this may be a little bit confusing but it'll get better with some practice next up Okay, and to get the magnitude of the vector, what we do is we use the Pythagorean theorem and we take the uh, x component and the y component, we square the x component, add that to the y component squared, and take the square root of the sum. And that will give us the length of our resultant vector r, which is what we want. Okay, here we have a practice and multiple choice problem. We'll start out with the practice problem and then you get your chance to show your stuff on the multiple choice. Well, we're driving up a long inclined road and after 1.5 kilometers, you notice that signs along the roadside indicate that your elevation has increased by 150 meters. What is the angle of the road above the horizontal? Um, I guess I'm gonna draw a picture because I, I need to see this to understand it. So I'm going to draw the picture. So my picture is that's 1500 meters. I've converted my 1.5 kilometers right into meters. It'll make my life easier down the road. Ha ha ha. Funny funny. Um, and my elevation has increased by 150 meters. That's 150 meters right there and put some units on it and I want to know what this angle is right there well let's see right triangle I'm gonna make this a right triangle the horizontal the angle of the roadway above the horizontal I have an opposite side of the triangle of 150 meters I have an adjacent side well the sine of this angle is equal to 150 meters divided by 1,500 meters. But I don't want the sine of the angle. I want the angle. So I have to use the inverse function. So the inverse sine of 
of 150. Over 1,500 is equal to theta. So let's bring up the calculator and we're going to calculate the inverse sine second sine which gives us the inverse of 150 divided by 1500 and that will give us an angle of about 5.7 so it gives us an angle of 5.7 degrees. Okay, now you can use some of the work that I've already done to answer your multiple choice. Good luck. Moving along, we're going to send you right into your free response and you're going to find the x and y components of the following vectors. Good luck. See you next time.